please welcome John Stewart and Pat Sansone. Records ago, a record called Circles, uh, 2004, I guess. We've been doing this a while, so. This is called The Sun in California. Anyone 
to understand all those lies I always wanted anyone to take my side when I As common as the sun in California, you were in my mind, brighter than the northern sky. So you mentioned, uh, John, that you guys have been around for a while. And Pat, you have said, you said that you weren't sure if you're going to do this album and that you had to reconnect with why we do this and realize how much you enjoy it. So why? why did you, how did you reconnect and, and how much do you enjoy it? Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, we, didn't, we didn't really decide that we we're not going to make a record after our last one, but we didn't. We didn't jump right into the idea of, of making another record. You know, the, it was. Uh, it, it was. Uh, you know, we did some touring after that record, and it was it was a little tougher than we expected. And I think we we just needed some time away from it to to sort of, you know, let the music come naturally and, and sort of just let it happen on its own without feeling like we you know okay that tour is over got to get in the studio and start sure. making another record and, and I'm glad we did it that way because because I think uh, you know I think the the process I think was probably the most in, enjoyable time we've had making an autumn defense record what was the process um, well the songs John John had a, a batch of songs that that came first um, after we spent some time in New Zealand making some music a couple of years ago and and that experience sort of sort of kick-started this creative time for, for, I think, for both of us. And so, yeah, John, John had a, like five or six really, really nice pieces. And uh, yeah, just sort of what we always do, sort of sit head to head, you know, with two guitars and, and uh, just kind of bang it out. So when you're in a band, a bigger band, there might be one leader or it might be a lot of voices and there might be a majority rules. But when you got two people who are making the decisions, how does it work if one person says, no, I love this song, this is the greatest song, and the other person says, no, 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 this is terrible. <laughs> Do you, does that ever happen, or does it just, with the Autumn Defense, is it just organically, you both seem to like the same stuff? Yeah, I think we, we really, we sort of, when we got to know each other, uh, we were both uh, living in New Orleans at the time, and we sort of, we, we, did, we did really quickly find out that our, our record collections were really, uh, eerily similar, and uh, I think we had a lot of um, there were a lot of touchstones that we both sort of um, 
latched onto. What immediately. were some of the What were some of the shared? Uh, it was a lot. You know, you know. It seems like this. This is like kind of like a Laurel Canyon sort of a vibe. These 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 songs, but we sort of like late '60s British pop yeah. was a, where we sort of found common ground at first. The um, Love Forever Changes record. I don't know if you know that. that I do because I've been reading about you guys, and you keep mentioning it. So I was like, I got to listen to it. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's a it's a definitely a classic of the of the genre. And, and uh, but you know, we uh, to answer your question, I think uh, you know there's just a lot of trust. I think, and and we can. I mean, we can. You know, we can bring up bring up uh, bring up uh, maybe a, an issue of uh, you know I think it would work better this way, and you know we can do that. It might be a little easier to do it one to one than than in a group of six people you know actually so one of the w one of the terms that came up a lot when describing the autumn defense and not in a bad way is soft rock and soft rock has uh, this connotation of being you know the light mm -hmm. um, <laughs> star star filters not the fire, l i g h t right yeah l i t -E. so so defend soft rock um, <laughs> did you ever <laughs> Have you seen Yacht Rock, by the way? I, have you seen I've, Yacht Rock? I've on? heard about it. Yeah, I've it's, seen the, I I think that'll answer a, a lot of questions. It will. <laughs> it will. There's a, there's, there's a leveling, I think, of I, I think I think after people laughed at, at a lot of the bands for so long, I think I think in a way it's sort of it's sort of like Clint, it sort of was a palate cleanser, so to speak. <laughs> I think people could go back and sort of sort of like they were hearing the songs again, and they could appreciate them for what they were. Which after is, they finished. Laughing, laughing at Michael McDonald, and they realize yeah. how awesome he is. <laughs> exactly. No, it's just. It's, it's so, what true. is, like, okay, what is good soft rock? Michael McDonald. It, what about, like, the association? Yeah, Big love, fan. Love the Huge fan. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. You know, that's a. Great I like example. them too, but that song, Goodbye Columbus, that's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Hello, I mean, Life, Goodbye ex Columbus. Exactly. They sing it better, but. Yeah. I mean, their, their albums were certainly uneven. <laughs> um, they were. But when they uh, hit it, when, I mean, when they hit it, they hit it. Never my love. I mean, that's yeah. um, kind of can't. Yeah, you know, cherish and free design. The band that would be that would be really, that would be kind of high top shelf soft rock in my opinion. So you would know? I mean I know they this is not the, always the kind of music they play on the station, but would ninety three point nine be on your preset in your car? <laughs> Oh man, I don't. I'm not hip, but to that. To That's the, not the, the light. The light. The, the light. light. Rocks oh man, yeah. yeah. Lila. It's Go not on. It's not in my. Change the preset <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't I don't I don't skip it. You know. <laughs> I mean I you know Michael. I'm speaking of Michael McDonald. I think I heard Yamo be there for the first time in you know 15 years recently on that station, and I, I stopped and yeah, sure. hung out there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I was there. You know? I was so when you guys met, and is this the way it generally works with bands forming? Was it, we, we share this, and you've talked about, you just talked about it, we share this great musical connection, but is that enough? Did there have to also be a personal, hey, we, we like each other, we want to be with each other? Well, I wouldn't oh, come go on. That. Come on. <laughs> come on. Go that, that far, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like each other? That's my question. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that, you know, I mean, a, a, a lot of, you know, I mean, the starting point for this band was the connection of, of you know, two guys meeting and, and, and sitting around listening to records, you know, and, and, and just, you know, digging records. So I think that was, it kind of, it kind of started as a friendship and then, you know, and then sort of naturally became this musical, um, you know, partnership as well, so. When you take your inspiration from music, and every band would have to do this, from what went in the past, and what you, sh music that you both loved, how do you then create something your own out of that? Therein lies the rub, for yeah. sure. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's hard, hard for any band. That's that's the big question. I don't Absolutely. think we spend a lot of time trying to necessarily do that. You know, I think we just try to make, I think we just try to write songs that we feel are are true to us, and we try to make them sound like records that we want to listen to. You know, I don't, I, you know, there might have been a little more of an impulse in the beginning to try to use a lot of, you know, sounds that not a lot of people use, and you know, a lot of mystery sounds and things like that, and that's really fun to do that kind of thing, but it's, 
I think I don't think it's really been a big impulse for us in our records, and we might get criticized for that. You know that it's just well, it just <clears throat> it doesn't sound like anything new, or it just sounds like they're just sort of trying to imitate all these these other things. And I don't know that it's necessarily imitation. I think that's just I think that's just what we feel like the songs call for is that type of treatment and that type of sound world. And it's we don't necessarily I don't necessarily feel like we're trying to reinvent the wheel every time we make a record. You know. That said, when you guys performed, and, it, and, I, and I loved it, but the songs, when you perform them just with two guitars, they sound a lot different, or not a lot different, the song is the same, but it, the, the, there's something very different about it than, than what's on the record, because there is a real production quality, and I know that's something that's very near and dear to your heart, and you use you know, orchestral pop, and you use different sounds. Talk about that element of the music and being in the studio and kind of your love for what can be done in the studio. Well, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to, to, it's hard to even really talk about. It's just, it's, well, you don't have to. No, I, 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 I will. I mean, how much time, how much time do we have? Is we the, have all night. Yeah. Well, I just, I love being in the studio and, and, and we, we both, we both do. And, and it's, um, you know, like I say, we, this came out of a, a, a genuine love for certain records. Not only the, the songs, not just the not just the, the chords and the and the and the lyrics, but the sounds. You know, the, the sound world that exists in those in those records. So I think you know anyone that that you know that, that does this and ha has a love for the for the studio. That's what it's about. It's sort of creating this other place. You know, try and. So uh, that's, uh, I think that's a big part of, of the music, you know, or, or why we are, are driven to, to do this music. It's like appreciating records, and you can appreciate the way they were made and the sounds, and, you know, you can, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's as big of a part as, as the writing process, you know. It's where they kind of meet and, you know, get to geek out in the studio, and, you know, it's kind of a dream. How do you not go... How do you keep yourself from going overboard? For example, I mean, like, you talk about, like, something like orchestral pop, and then you have, like, the London Symphony Orchestra playing with Guns N' Roses, November Rain, which I love, but it's overboard. How do you, res how do you keep, those keep the elements you love but not go crazy? Um, a budgetary thing sort of limits that. <laughs> yeah. We'll never... Yeah, not having not. Guns N' Roses money. <laughs> it's, 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 it's wonderful. You so know? if you had Guns N' Roses money, you would be making Use Your Illusion 3 and 4. <laughs> Perhaps. Well, maybe so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good idea. <laughs> and you recorded part of it at the loft. It's called the loft, right? Right. Have you guys ever thought about doing tours? People would pay for that. Or oh. do you do tours? Oh, tours of the place? No, yeah. I think. Yeah, we're trying to. You know, you know, never thought about security very much, but you know, yeah. it's uh, how would we want to? I don't know if we want to bring that many people. There's not much room to to walk around. We kind of know the the corridors, you know, but uh, I'm afraid people would just fall over, you know. <laughs> well, one thing, you know, and <laughs> shit, you know. There's a lot of nice carpeting in the loft. Does that, I uh, know, I mean. Have I, you been there? Well, no, there's a night, are you talking, on the Wilco <laughs> site, there's a oh, three-dimensional, yes. you, right. you are there. Right. Um, but I'm oh, actually yeah, also in the market NASA for a carpet, and so I've been, I, it, was, it was important to me to check it out. Um, but <laughs> my question is, does the carpeting, is that meaningful to the kind of sounds that you make? If it was a wooden floor or you were performing the, in a bowling alley, it would be different. Like oriental rugs, like the Black Crows called. And yeah, they went, they does that the affect... Rugs back. <laughs> um, uh, that, it, uh, you know, I, I, someone has to say it, but it really does tie the room together. It really does tie the sound together. <laughs> yeah. Two questions about Wilco. I'm going to let you guys go. One is, th there's a coffee now that Wilco puts out. Do you have any involvement um, in that? Well, it's funny you ask because... <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, no, I sort of did, we a, love did a tasting yeah, and we love Intelligentsia. Yeah. Yeah. It's like one of the great Chicago exports, I'm sure you guys know. And, uh, yeah, we amazing met... Amazing company. Yeah, and, met, uh, met some of the guys from Intelligentsia at, at, at Big Star one night yeah. and uh, just... Just kind of started chatting, and, and you know we're fans of fans of their coffee. They're fans of the band, so yeah, we they invited us to the to the uh, 
you know, to the roasting facility, and, and we sat around and tasted a bunch of different beans, and, and uh, yeah, next thing we knew, there was a Wilco coffee. What makes the coffee, does it have the essence of Wilco? <laughs> it's well, it's Ethiopian, yeah. so I, I would say decidedly not. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, we could use a little, you know, could use it's, a little, yeah, little it's, more African sort It's of experimental, but, but earthy. Okay. <laughs> Starts out kind of alt country and then moves into more. Starts starts off earthy and ends up, you know, ends up wacky. Why didn't you guys and I? I you'll maybe be mad at me, but I can't drink caffeine, so I'm a deca- Yeah, it's well, it's a physical problem. Um, but I, I, we can talk about it later after the show. <laughs> but you guys say on your site that you did not test the decaf and you just let them do it. What? what why? <laughs> It's a good question. I didn't, I didn't really. I don't, I don't remember know if I was any, ever offered. Well, I don't actually. think we were presented with any decaf. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, it would pr- sure, it's good. Probably trust them over, yeah. <laughs> over their, their palates over ours. It was amazing, though. It was, it was, you know, in a rocks glass with with loosely ground coffee, 120 degree water, and then push down on a spoon, stick your nose in it, and tell me what you smell. And uh, you know, I didn't. I couldn't really, you know, it would kind of yeah. freak me out. It, <laughs> it showed my, my, the limitation of my palate, but... Would you do, and the Autumn Defense actually would be better. You guys, the Autumn Defense should do a cologne. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, totally. the problem is, is that I, I don't have the sense of smell. Really? It's true. Well, how do you, I, thought, I thought when you eat, most of what you pick I up don't eating, eat. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I hope you were. I no, was hoping I, you wouldn't say that. Actually, <laughs> no, I do. I yeah. You, you can't smell. I was born without the sense of smell. Is that true? Mm-hmm. And you still don't have that sense of smell. No, I don't have it. But when you eat, you can taste things fine. I think I can. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's the way that I know how to, you know the taste of food. I'm sure it's different than it would be if I did possess the sense of smell as well. It's called anosmia. Is the, is the name of it? Do you mind me asking questions about it? No. no. <laughs> if you're in a room that smells terrible. Are you fine with that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like perfect I mean, occupation, rock and roller. Yeah. Right? yeah. I've been. I've been in. <laughs> I've been. CBGB's bathroom. Does anyone remember that? I've been in a lot of vans with a lot of dudes, you know, over the years. And, and you're having a great time, and everybody still else doing is it. miserable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> still, still doing it. All right. Uh, I'll go to another subject. And the last question is: the album is great. You guys just toured, and now you're moving on, I assume, to Wilco duties. When is the next record coming out? And uh, I'm not, this year, I would imagine, but not quite sure when. Later. We're, we're, yeah, know, we're working on one, but, but yeah, we're, I don't think there's a definite. We don't have a yeah. is it specific good? deadline. Is it good? Yeah, yeah so far. <laughs> so far, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's coming along. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, guys, for coming on. Thanks John for John Stewart, Pat Sansone of the Autumn Defense. <laughs>